Hello everyone. A very warm welcome to my genetics class. This is the third lesson of the series named Epistatic Interactions. Before you come to the third lesson, I would request you to kindly go through the first and second lessons, the description, uh, the link of which will be shared in the description box for this uh, lecture. See, until and unless you are aware of what is epistasis, what are epistatic interactions, how are the effects of one, how is the effect of one gene masking that of the other gene, you will never understand these subsequent interactions. So it's better that you first go to lecture one, then to lecture two, and then come to this lesson. Okay, so let's get started. Today we will talk about dominant epistasis, right? So we are going to talk about dominant epistasis, right? See, when dominant allele A masks the expression of B, then A is the epistatic gene of B and can express itself only in the presence of B. That is capital B or small b allele. Okay. So what did I say? When dominant allele A mass the expression of B then A is the epistatic gene. A is the epistatic gene of B, right? And can express itself and can express itself only in the presence of presence of okay so see when A is masking the effect of B, right? It means what? A is the epistatic gene of B. It goes without saying so far, we have been discussing this only. A is the epistatic gene of B. Okay, but A can only express itself in the presence of this or this, right? Therefore, it is called dominant epistasis. Therefore, it is called dominant epistasis, right? Now see B. B expresses only when Remember, B expresses only when this condition is there. It's not that B will also mask the effect of A and B will express itself 
in the presence of capital A and small a? No. B expresses only when this condition is there. Okay. Thus, what happens? You see, the thus nine is to three is to three is to one. This ratio gets modified to. Now our question is: This one will find out. This gets modified to what will find out? Okay, we'll write it here. We'll come back to this page and we'll write here. Therefore, see, see here. Let's write the condition as we do it for the other crosses. Gene pair A is controlling white or white dominant. We can write. Okay. Gene pair B yellow dominant. Right. One more color comes here. That is green. Now we will see what is gun controlling this, or what is governing this green color. Okay. Let's go to the checkerboard. I've already drawn the checkerboards to save time. Parental generation. What do we have? See, crossed with, right? No confusion here. We yield this. This is your F one. F two. What will we have? This is our F two. Okay, selfing of F one individual. This gives you this. Okay. Now let's see what do we have in this cross. Let's see how many white we have. We'll just change the color. How many white we have? Let's see. What did I say? Capital A, capital A, a uh, capital A is the main factor which we are going to look for. And capital A will only express in the presence of capital B and small b. So we are going to also look for capital B as well as small b. So here, this will be white. This is white. This is white. This is also white. This is also white. In this row, all are white. In the next row, white, 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 white. In the third row, what do we have? This is white. This is white. This is what? This is not white because capital A is not present. So this is yellow. Why yellow? Because we know. The yellow color is governed by capital B. This is yellow. This is also yellow, right? Yes. Now, again, let's see how many white. This is white. This is what? This is also white. Why? Because capital A, small b, A expresses in the presence of both capital. B as well as small b. So see, capital A is there. 
those capital B is not here. Small b is present, so it will be it will definitely be white. Now, what is this one now? This is again your yellow. Capital B is present. Now the question is, what is this one? This is the green one. In homozygous recessive condition, both recessive condition, you get green. This is your green one. So this is the genetic complement for or genotype for green color. Okay. Now let's see what is our ratio. Our ratio is how many whites? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 is to how many yellow? 1, 2, 3. And how many green? 1. So our ratio is modified to 12 is to 3 is to 1. This is what we get. And this interaction is known as dominant epistasis. So what do we see here? Dominant white. Huh. Dominant white masks the effect of yellow and green. Okay, isn't this easy? Dominant epistasis is very easy and it's very easy to remember also. Nothing difficult over here, right? So this is our required ratio and this is how we come to an end of dominant epistasis. Kindly go through the previous lectures in order to understand this lecture better. Till then, Thank you so much. Stay connected for lesson four, where we were. We are going to discuss inhibitory gene interaction. Till then, goodbye.